Hello Giants, this is Mrs. Rose, your librarian, and I'm here to talk to you today about some resources that you have available to you through the Indianapolis Public Library. First of all, I'm going to talk to you about the databases that we have through our Wayne Township webpage, and then also I'm going to tell you some exciting news that we have from the Indianapolis Public Library about some more digital resources. First, I want to talk to you about our databases. You may already have some experience with our databases, but since we've changed the format a little bit, I want to make sure everyone has some information on how to use them. So if you go to the Wayne Township homepage, and then under Students, go to Digital Resources, and then Wayne Media Resources, it will take you here, and you will click on Research. And then you can choose any of these, but the top tab will take you here to our databases. These databases make researching much easier. These Articles that you will find here have already been vetted, meaning they've already been looked at and checked for accuracy and authenticity. And there's also many tools that you can use to help you out. I'm going to choose one of my favorites, Opposing Viewpoints. These are normally hot topics that have both sides of the issue, which many of you doing research papers will want access to something like this. So you have many tools that I will show you a little bit more of, but if you go down here, let's just choose an issue. Of course, you can always search an issue up here. But let's say we're going to do an article about, or essay about recycling. This gives you a little bit of an overview of recycling. And then here are all of the resources that you have. You have videos, you have audio, you have photos, magazines, statistics. Any of these can be used in your research. Let's go here to news. Obviously, 4,654 articles is way too much to be browsing through. So you can do a topic finder or filter your results. We can drill down into that a little bit more later when you are actually doing your research. But let me just choose this first one by Washington Post to give you some information or I'm sorry, to give you a demo of how to use these databases. So this article is from November 19th of, the, of 2019, so it's relevant, recent information, which is what you want when you're doing research. And some of the tools that you have available, um, one really nice thing about using these databases is they can all be translated into many languages. So if English is not your native language, you can translate to help you do the research a little bit. We can change the font size. We can even listen to any of these articles, which is really great if you're an auditory learner. You also have the ability to use any of these tools. You can see I was um, playing around with this a little bit, but you can highlight anything and you can highlight it in different colors. So let's say I'm writing an essay about, um, or a five paragraph essay, and my first body paragraph, this goes to support my topic here. So I will highlight this in green. So these two go to support my first topic. Then these two go to support my second body paragraph, my second topic. So I'm going to do them in blue. And then I can go down here and I can do something in yellow. So now I know I have a visual outline of where these will go. I could also take notes if I wanted to say something about this sentence and about what I want to say about it, where it's going to go. So all of this will be saved for me if I send this to my Google Drive. So that's really, really great. You can also email this to your teacher to show them your research and what you did for notes. That would be a great resource for you. And the best part about these databases, in my opinion, which I so wish I would have had access to when I was in your shoes, is the source citation. All I have to do to record my source is to select this, copy it, and paste it to my Works Cited page. That is brilliant. And um, you can even export it to any of these should you need to. You can also change it to APA style, which we don't use much at Benavis High School, but when you go to college, you may have to source citation in APA, depending on what subject area you're in. So that's really, really nice to have as well. So you can save all of these. It's also a really clean, easy print. As you can see, if you were to go to, you know, Google something, you got ads, you got pictures, it's all crazy. This is all nice and clean if you are a person who needs a hard copy. All right, so those are our databases that you have access to and you may already know about. 
So let me go on to the more exciting news. We just got word that all of our students at Ben Davis High School will have digital library cards. This gives you access to ebooks, audiobooks, movies, and music through the Indianapolis Public Library, as well as many other resources. So I'm going to show you some of those resources now. Under the resource tab, sorry, research tab, you have Access 360. This is where you'll find some young adult books, audiobooks, and then also some digital indie archives from the Public Library's digital collection, as well as all of these categories and all of these resources. So let's say you are looking for um, some homework help. We could go to homework help here. And a lot of these are the same databases that I showed you before, but there are more here for you that you could use. Let's say that you're working on learning a language. You have access to some sites that will help you with language like Rosetta Stone, which is a very well-renowned website to help with learning a new language. Um, let's say that you are working on your license. You can go to drivingtest.org here and get some practice for your Indiana driver's license. You also have some access to ACT, SAT, ASVAB, test prep as well. And you guys will have these digital library cards for five years. So you will have them into college. This can all help you into college and you will have the ability to access any of these categories. Um, your teacher will have information if you would like to come down to the Media Center and get more information on what this digital library card gives you access to. Your impact teacher also has a copy of your digital library card information. I would highly suggest that you take a picture of that information and save it in your phone so you will always have it. Once you log in to the library or to the computer, that will be saved under your passwords if you choose to save it. And I hope that you will come down and learn more information about how to use these databases and resources. I would be happy to walk you through some of this, and I hope that you will see the value in having access to this thanks to the Indianapolis Public Library.